Hey there, this is Melissa from Designs by Little B, and today I'm going to show you how to use the stop or color stop button in Embrilliance Essentials to edit a key fob to be a little different and suit your purpose that you're using it for better. Now, as a digitizer, I of course keep all of my working files for my designs. So if I wanted to do this using my uh, Stitch Artist software, which is the digitizing module of Embrilliance, I could of course bring in the working file and just move that tab however I want it. But as a customer, you only have the file that's the format that your machine uses. So for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to use one of those files and edit the design. So what I did is I went into my folder for this cute little camera key fob and I brought in the PES file. All I did was open the folder in my other monitor that you can't see in this screen and I dragged the PES file right over into the software and dropped it in. Now I recently got a cute little Bluetooth camera shutter button for my cell phone. You know what I mean? It's one of those things where instead of setting the timer on your phone to take a picture of yourself in a group or yourself in some kind of location and then running over to the picture and trying to get a good picture, you use the little button to click it and it just takes the picture remotely. Anyway, I got one of those this week and I really wanted to make a cute little camera key fob to attach to it to help keep up with it. But of course, being me, I really wanted the key fob to have the little eyelet tab on the side, on this left side, just so it's horizontally oriented. I don't know why, just because I always wanna be difficult. So the first thing you're going to do is go over here to the right or wherever your objects pane is and expand the steps of the design by clicking the plus sign. Here you can see and click on the steps of each design and the order in which they'll stitch out. So the first step in changing that little tab is to go up to the needle and thread at the top of your screen right here. If you hover over it, it says Stitch Simulator. When you click on that, it will expand a little, almost like a little graph of each color and the order in which the steps are gonna stitch out in your design. So if you grab the little square at the front of that graph, you can drag it along the line and watch the design stitch out as it would in your machine. Now what I'm gonna do is when I get right to the part where the tab for the eyelet is about to stitch out, I'm going to stop. If you went a little farther past it, you can use the arrow buttons right there between the stop sign and the bar to go back and forth one stitch at a time. When you get to that perfect stitch where it's about to start on the element you're trying to edit and change, click that stop button and this thread color chart will pop up. All you have to do now is select a different color. It does not matter what color it is, it just needs to be different than the step that you were changing. What this does is it tells your embroidery machine, this is a different color, this is a different step, you need to stop before you stitch this. You can see when I go through the step list, it now shows that one is the camera part and two is a different step, which is now the tab. The step that I just edited was that first step, which is a placement stitch for the key fob. Now we also need to change the tab in the same way on the final stitch that goes around at the very end. So I'm going to scroll forward just like I did before all the way to that last stitch, which for this project happens to be purple. I'm gonna go all the way to that perfect stitch where it's about to start on the tab part of the design. I'm gonna hit stop and select a random color. Now what you're going to do is go through your steps in your design and you want to select those two little tab steps. I'm on a Windows computer, so I select one, hold down the control key, and then I select the other. This makes sure that they are both selected and I can move them around my screen together. Now for whatever reason, when I made this one, I grabbed this little handle up at the top of my selected portions of the fob and I rotated them to my liking. I do want to note that you could also click up on your select objects arrow that's just to the right of the stitch simulator and there are buttons that pop up kind of over to the left side that say rotate object 90 degrees, one is clockwise, one is counterclockwise. That would also be an easy way of rotating this tab. 
So I did mine using the little handle. I rotate the tab or the two tabs, the placement and the finishing stitch to the left side and then I place them right where I want them onto the fob. If you sent this design to your machine just like this, it would stitch with those tab steps separate from the ones before them. So the easy way to tell your machine to stitch the tab with the original stitch is to select the outline of the camera and the tab for the placement stitch first. Click on the word color under properties and you'll see that the colors shown are two different colors. If you click OK on the box that pops up, it will make both of those steps the same color as the first step in the series. Now, when you go back out to your design, you will see that it looks like it's still a separate step. However, when you save this file in your folder as the format that you're going to use, your machine will see that as one step because it's the same color. If you want to check this out for yourself, you can always go back into the folder, drag that new saved file back into your Embrilliance Essential software, and you can see that that step has been saved as one. We are now going to do the exact same thing with the final step. You select the last um, go around the camera, which again is purple on mine, and then you select the tab and click color and select, I just click OK to make them both purple. Now I want to save this file in my original folder as a different name. So I'm going to open a new window up here with a little blank page. It's going to be untitled. Go into that folder, which again is open on a different monitor for me, and drag in that new design that you just saved. You see how the first and last steps are now saved as one. If you run your stitch simulator, you will see that yes, it does start and stop at different places for the tab. Now without that original digitized design, it is really, really hard to get it to where it will stitch in the order of stopping right at the tab and going around it. It's now going to stitch in two different steps. You can do it again by using the start and stop points and then lining up. It's just really complicated and personally I don't really care if there's one extra start and stop point. When you see my sample you'll probably notice that I did not change that final step, the eyelet tab, to the same color as the final stitching around the camera. I left my eyelet tab, just the tab, a different color so the machine recognized it as a different step. I put my backing piece on, then I stitched the camera in white, and I stitched the eyelet tab in black. I felt like this gave the camera such a great pop. If this video helped you learn something new about Embrilliance and made you want to jump out there and try any of their modules for their software, I'm thrilled if you use the affiliate link that I post below each of my videos. I will see you in the next video, and I'll chat with you in the group. Bye!